Hi, I'm Darren from Isotonic Studios and welcome to part two of our walkthrough of our follow device. If you haven't watched the first video, follow is a Max for Live device that performs automatic follow actions at the end of clips or defined by a, a certain trigger type. In this video, we're gonna run through the options that are available for the trigger types and the various follow actions that you can dial in. We'll come back with the third video to show you how to control it in live using MIDI or even clip envelopes. Let's have a look at the device now. Okay, so we're in our, our demo set that we've been building up over the last few uh, videos as we demonstrate our products. And this is the one that I'm reusing from ClipX Pro's Macrobat video. Uh, so in each of my tracks, I, I do have my isotonic DJ template and we'll be coming back and looking at some other bits and pieces we can do with those later but in track one uh, I've got my follow scene device every other track just has the isotonic DJ rack every single one of these clips uh, is pretty much identical there's nothing special about them uh, there's no loops going on there's no follow actions going on effectively they're, they're at the moment completely vanilla so what we wanted to do with this video was just take you through the various options that we have. So we'll kick off with the trigger type and let's have a look. We've got a two bar clip envelope. Let's turn the loop off. So after two bars, the clip should end. And what's gonna happen at clip end? Well, let's set the follow action to play again. So it's like creating a loop, but it's quite an interesting one, this. So I've launched the clip in track one. And at the end of that clip, it's going to launch the scene, the Ignacio scene. And it's going to keep doing that over and over and over again. So like setting a loop, I can set to again. And at clip end, let's have a look at what that's doing. And as you can hear, because I've got a quantize of one quarter or a beat effectively, and a trigger time of one, which was covered in the first video, then we've got nice smooth audio going through. Now what might happen though, is I might want to play that clip for longer. And as you can see, it's actually got a four bar loop. Now the other clips in that scene, well, they're still just the two bar, no looping. So they've stopped. So realistically, I'd like them to play again. So if I change that to bypass looping, change the number loops before action to be one, as that clip plays through once, it relaunches that scene. So if I was to change that though, so two loops, my other seven clips, they've stopped. And as soon as I get to my second, it's gonna relaunch them again. So you can use this to ha have almost a break in your audio. Uh, have this loop for a bit and then the other elements kick back in. Now, that's quite a simple way of looking at it. So if you've got looping on, you want to bypass looping or just let the scene flow. If, however, you have an unwarped clip. And an unwarped clip, whilst it does have uh, uh, no, it's not got beats and bars. So follow actions aren't gonna work particularly well. Um, they're gonna trigger, but they're gonna trigger on the master tempo. So what we were asked for by one of our subscribers was the fact that they were playing clips that were unwarped, long, large pieces of atmospherics, and they wanted to be able to trigger the next clip or scene on a time basis. So now if you select time, you'll notice just here that there's a new option popped up and we can change that to maybe six seconds and then effectively it will play again. Two, three, four, five, six. I can't count the seconds. Ah, ah, even though the clip had stopped, it's still counted from the point where the clip was launched and it's gonna play six seconds afterwards. So you can actually program in amounts of silence into your performance if you were doing a set and leave it and people were coming into the experience, etc. Let's stop that for now as well. The other part is the clip stop. 
This is with caution because when a clip stops, it's automatically going to trigger the next follow action. You'll see what I mean now. So I've come to here, the clip's going to stop and it's going to trigger it again. Now the difference with this clip action as opposed to clip end is rather than clip triggering before the clip end to get a smooth seamless uh, performance, clip stop waits until the clip has stopped and then it actually triggers the next scene. So why you might ask would I... <sighs> Only way to stop it when it's on clip stop, stop the transport. <laughs> Must cover that. Why would I want to use that? Well. If I have a look here, I've got this looping on gate trigger and it's been set to launch mode of gate. And if I have a look in my envelopes, particularly on the isotonic DJ rack, I've got a bass uh, control, just an EQ, that when I play this clip, it's gonna reduce it over a period of time down to zero, okay? So the launch mode is actually gate, which means that as I press uh, with my mouse effectively, I'm not hooked up to MIDI controller. As long as I'm pressing, it's going to basically keep playing. And hopefully you can hear that that is playing nicely. And as soon as I let go, it launched the rest of the scene. Now, what you can do in combination with some of the other clip actions with regards to the follow actions you can choose is you may wish to, let's stop that, you may wish to choose a particular name of a clip. And what we have here is we will launch, shall we say, the Groove Army Delicious, which is Harold. Let's have a look in the clip for Harold and let's set a, make sure it's got a clip envelope, base one, and it's a reset value. So let's have a look at how that works with regards to this particular uh, parameter. As I play, my effect could be engaged, my parameters start to move, and as I let go, it resets it back to zero. So this could be used with dummy clips, uh, effectively with you know audio for it running through them and you could dial in whatever you like with your parameters. Maybe it's a, a glitch period uh, using a beat repeat or something like that. As soon as you let go, it's gonna trigger the next. Now this is down to a, a quarter, so it's doing it in that regard. You might wish to change your uh, reset clip effectively to none, so that as soon as you let go, it kicks back in so that the, the transition is virtually instantaneous. Your bass is dropping, your bass is dropping, your bass is back where it needs to be. So that's the main uh, trigger types. Remembering with time, you have some options with regards to how long, and with bypass looping, you have the option of setting how many loops before the follow action is triggered. So let's have a look at the follow action types. As we mentioned before in the previous video, you have the option to dial them in using a clip envelope, or you could set them via MIDI on the fly with the 10 named buttons. But what do they do? Well, simple. We've seen again, it's very simple, it repeats again. Uh, let's just change that back so it follows the global quantization, otherwise it will sound a bit patchy. Excellent. Previous. Plays the previous, the one above. And keeps going. And as you can see, it's also highlighting here as we explained in the previous video, the elephant and now donut. It was my version of the phonetic alphabet, I think it's called. Next is probably the most popular action, the one that most people tell us that they use. It will play sequentially down and enable you to really create your live set, your arrangement in session view, and then use the great functionality of it to be able to loop stuff on the fly, re-trigger bits, layer up drums, all that kind of stuff. Now first, it does as the normal file action does. It will work out what's the first clip in that particular block of clips, of my trigger clips, and it will go to that one. Last, unsurprisingly, does the same, but the opposite. 
and triggers the last. Any basically works out how many clips it's got in that particular block and will randomize picking one of them in any order. You can choose to include or exclude the current clip for even more randomness. So you wouldn't have the same clip played twice with the exclude clip on. With name, you choose the name. And basically, as soon as you pick, let's say Ignacio, it's gonna play Ignacio. Now that really importantly can be set by clip envelope uh, as part of the, of the clip itself. So as the clip plays, it will choose which is the next one to, to be played. Cue next. Ah, silence. So cue next basically will move down a layer in your uh, scene. So one scene down. And then you have the choice whether to, as we have here, leave the transport running and leave the clips pay playing. You can choose to stop the transport and clip next and cue next. And you can choose to leave the clips, stop the clip, sorry, stop the transport and cue next as you've seen there. And you can you choose to stop the clips and cue next as well. So with those both off, the transport will keep playing and any clips that are looping or have time left to finish will keep playing. With them on, all your clips will stop and the transport will stop. Simple. Relative, well, that's fairly simple in explanation. Um, you have a numeric value and you dial it in with regards to how far away you want the next clip to play. So one in advance, one positive, effectively becomes the larger, uh, sorry, Kenworth, <coughs> larger, etc., etc., and of course you can go the other way. Now the chosen, now the chosen isn't something that you'll particularly use as set by clip envelopes or, or in fact MIDI to a degree. It's exactly what it's for. Chosen is effectively these orange buttons here, which again will cover with the MIDI side of things, but you can dial in by choosing the highlighted scene, which will update, or you can get the clues from the clip name. So that's the follow action trigger types and the follow action types themselves. Clip M, bypass looping, time and clip stop. Loads of options there for spontaneity and all of the follow action types. All individually MIDI mappable, all programmable by clip envelope, enabling you to program your set, but still leave things to get, you know, spontaneous. Yeah. Spontaneate. Go with the flow just like Ableton Live was designed to do. Thanks for watching.